When I was somewhere between fourth grade and fifth grade, moving trucks showed up at our house and they started pulling all our furniture out of our house. And we didn't know but my dad was leaving. And none of us saw it coming. My mom went to the bank block away and we had no money. Uh, that was pretty traumatic um, for all of us really, but it kind of got me thinking like, what is the meaning of life? And I was always that weird kid, like thinking philosophically. I remember sitting in my basement just thinking, what's our life all about? What if we're, our whole universe is just part of somebody's dream? And then what if they wake up? And I remember legitimately worrying about that as a kid. Me. One more time, give it your all. Spirit falls. Spirit falls. Spirit falls. Right, Crew in Detroit started in 1981. Um, we've been here part of it the last five years. It's been really incredible. Five years ago, there, were, there had been like a lull with crew here. There were only about three students involved. And we've seen God really grow it since that time. Um, even having about you know, 80 to 90 students involved now in small group Bible studies, coming out to our meetings. Um, so it's really a privilege being here. Overall, we get together and we just have a lot of fun. We worship, we read. And I mean, to a lot of other people, like all the things we do would seem boring, but like to me, it's like I look forward to crew meetings. I like, like on Wednesday nights, I'll be like, oh yeah, Bible study, I get to hang out with everyone and read the Word. You ever have to read Sinners in the Hands of Angry God? Maybe you got to read it at Christian school or homeschool. I don't know. Maybe you do. Um, dude, it's incredible. Like it, when I went to public school, they were like, this is ridiculous. It was kind of used as a sign of like how dumb Christianity was. And then I became a Christian in college. I actually, actually read it. I just wept because actually it's a picture of. It's actually a picture of grace. It's like, this is what our sin actually deserves, and yet God is coming to get us, you know? I think what's cool is this. When you see that God is going to be setting everything right, so many of you guys are facing things in your life that just aren't right, aren't you? Um, you're facing racism. You're facing things in your classes. Maybe some of you guys have probably been sexually abused. Some of you guys are facing things, um, even sicknesses, diseases, um, Things in your life that it's like, it's just not right. Uh, if you ever open the news, you know, you hear about things that aren't right and it gets you frustrated, it gets you angry, and you say, this isn't right. But there's not much you can do sometimes, right? Second Peter 3.9 says this, The Lord is not slow to fulfill His promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. <laughs> And so when I think about Jesus and I think about these things that we have to face, a lot of them I can't wrap my head around. I don't understand why God chooses to do things one way or another. But what I do know is this. Right now, he's not being slow. He's being patient. Only a year has gone by, and I'm just totally looking forward to like the rest of the years. And just, it's so amazing, dude. Okay, one thing that you're looking forward to now that the weather is warm. Go. I haven't really thought about it. I know, just the warmth in general. I can go outside without, oh, I know. Um, I love the feeling of not putting on jackets or like, like huge pants. <laughs> not so much that one. Okay, okay. shorts, I like shorts. I have a cousin who goes to Ohio State and she went to crew down there and she loves it. So. When I saw that there was an opportunity for the praise and worship team, I just took it. And so then when I did it, it was the best choice because now I got like a whole community of people that help me with my spiritual life and it's just, I look forward to it every week, which is great. What attracts me and also some, most other people to Christianity too is just, um, just having this notion of love and not having to have someone judge you constantly all the time. You know, it's just this person, he knew who you were from the beginning, he knew you were going to do some bad things, but he also knew that he wanted you. Like I still want to love people, I want to do the best I can, but that's not what defines who I am. Um, just God's love for me and his forgiveness and being his child uh, really defines who I am. Even as, um, you know, serving on campus, you know, serving the students here at Wayne State, what really defines me isn't how good of a job I do or how many people come to crew, but just really experiencing God's love and giving other students a chance to experience that. So that's a little bit of my story.